The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, man's best friend has become the doc's lab rat. It was a dog's heart. And it's being paid for by your tax dollars. We're talking about government spending. And then, a husband with a secret. I clicked out of curiosity and it opened up to a whole new world. That led to an addiction. A part of me dying. Watch what happened when his wife found out. And I just remember praying that I would die on the table. On today's 700 Club. Hey, welcome, folks, to this edition of the Seven Hurt Club. It looks like the Donald's going again. Can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, he's one of the first sitting presidents to announce Ever. this soon. Well, it's smart because all the little people who would be saying, well, I can take a shot at it, they won't be out raising money anymore. They'll be sitting quietly, and he'll have the field to himself, which is smart. Well, they say he's never really stopped campaigning since he oh, oh, took it's, office. It's, you know? it's great. Well, he's going to sweep it, I think, and we'll... we'll We'll see, and uh, I'm seeing if I can't get an interview. They're, <clears throat> they've been shutting him down. They, they don't want him to do sitting interviews, but maybe I can get something. I'd like to see it. The other thing is that it's shocking. You know, 60 Minutes had a piece about the chemical weapons that Assad is using in Syria. It is just horrible. They showed pictures of people who were dead, and it, the bodies bloating, little children gasping for breath because of deadly gas, sarin, or what have you they're putting out. Now, it's, today we've got a report from the United Nations that says without question, North Korea has been sending as much as 50 tons of supplies to build chemical weapons. Remember Obama said there was a red line? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if he gets into chemical weapons, we'll, that'll be the red line. Well, I think the red line has long been crossed. It, that man, you know, he's a medical doctor trained in Europe. I can't understand. He's a monster. It's, it's horrible to think you would do that to your own people. Yeah. It's, you know, beyond anything. And it's not surprising that North Korea and Syria are teaming up on well, this. North Korea is unspeakably evil. They, they've destroyed their own people uh, for decades now. But, you know, the Assad, they're Alawites. It's a small a sect, and they have controlled a majority Sunni country, and uh, they've done it with brutal repression. I mean, really brutal. And Assad's daddy, Hafez al-Assad, was an absolute butcher. Mm. But I think it's time for the nations of the world to take those guys out. We've got a crime family running a country in North Korea. We've got uh, the Assad family running uh, Syria. And millions, millions of people are suffering. And that war goes on because we're not doing anything about it. And the Russians are backing up Assad, and they're probably behind the scenes backing up North Korea. It's going to be a tough call for the president. And if there was ever a time that we uh, pray, we ought to pray right now that our president will have the wisdom of what to do because this is a major crisis. Wendy? Yeah, the United Nations report comes amid still more brutal bombings by the Syrian government. Those attacks have killed, as Pat said, well over 500 people in the last several days. Caitlin Burke brings us the story. The Syrian government is suspected of using chemical weapons nearly 200 times over the course of the country's seven-year civil war. Since the start, there have been suspicions that North Korea was providing both equipment and expertise. Now, the U.N. has some pretty substantial proof. In a 200-page report obtained by the New York Times, U.N. experts detail how North Korea has violated international sanctions by sending ballistic missile and chemical weapons components to Syria. Some of the materials shipped include acid-resistant tiles, valves, and thermometers. At least 40 unreported shipments were discovered between 2012 and 2017, but the transfers reportedly date as far back as 2008. I think the, the overarching message is that all member states have a duty and a responsibility uh, to abide by uh, the sanctions that are in place. The report shows that both countries are working to find a way around the sanctions meant to reduce their military development. 
as North Korea is looking for a way to make money to pay for its nuclear weapons program, and the Syrian government wants to maintain chemical weapons to use in its civil war. In the last nine days alone, more than 500 people have been killed in Syria, at least 142 of them children. I think what, what is going on in, in East Ghouta is the equivalent of, of hell on earth. We have seen, uh, we are seeing Security Council resolutions completely ignored, a resolution that has called for a 30 day uh, halt to the fighting. Uh, we have seen various other calls for more limited ceasefires being completely ignored. The U.S. recently warned that it may again use military force in Syria if the government there keeps using banned weapons. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Well, what are we going to do? Syria wouldn't be much as difficult. The Russians would probably defend, but they might back off if we come in with force. But North Korea is a different story because they're threatening the South, and they, they could really rain some terrible uh, devastation on South Korea. But at the same time, something's got to be done. We cannot allow these regimes. And then you've got Nicaragua, the people down there are starving. They're eating rats or they're eating grass or they're starving to death. Uh, they're dying from starvation. And that Maduro regime down there is just, uh, again, monstrous. That's what... That's what uh, you can see when you have ultimate communism and <clears throat> in the hands in Venezuela, the hands of a bus driver, whatever he wants. Mm. Well, <clears throat> here in the United States, we've got much better news. People believe things are looking up for the economy. John Jessup has this happy report. <laughs> Always good to deliver happy news, Pat. Well, consumer confidence has hit its highest level in more than 17 years. People believe the job market is in good shape and they're starting to see more money in their paychecks from President Trump's tax cuts. Those are the findings from the survey by the conference board in New York. Lynn Franco, a director on the conference board, says overall, consumers remain quite confident that the economy will continue expanding at a strong pace in the months ahead. If consumer confidence stays at high levels, that could be good news for Republicans in this year's midterm elections and for President Trump's re-election bid in 2020. Well, testing is underway on new technology that would detect explosives at airports and mass transit stations. It's currently in use at New York's Penn Station, where the TSA says it can keep passengers safer without slowing them down. National Security Correspondent Eric Rosales has this report on the new technology. Take a good look. Do you see anyone carrying a suicide bomb under their clothes? You may miss it, but these two bomb detection units will not. The machines look for metallic and non-metallic objects on a person's body. The TSA, in partnership with Amtrak, is testing the new scanners at New York's busy Penn Station. One resembles a long tube-like camera on a tripod, while the other is mounted inside a trunk. The machines can scan people up to about 16 yards. I'm standing on a football field, and that's about from right here to the camera. And unlike a traditional machine where people actually have to go through it, this one, people just have to walk right in front of it. We want it to be visible. There's no need to conceal it. Uh, that actually aids in terms of a deterrent factor. We've got a sign up that lets people know we're using the equipment. But if they want to turn around and walk out, that's fine. It's already been tested at major events like Super Bowl 52 and in other big cities like Los Angeles. If a potential threat is detected, it triggers an alarm on an operator's laptop. Ironically, the testing is taking place just a few blocks from where suicide bomber and ISIS supporter Akayed Ula unsuccessfully tried to blow himself up at the Port Authority station back in December. He used a crudely made pipe bomb attached to his body. We already know that this equipment would have detected what we saw uh, in New York back in December at Port Authority because we rebuilt that device and have tested it on this equipment and indeed it would have alarmed. The TSA has worked since 2004 with five passenger rail and transit agencies to test bomb detection equipment. The agency says there's still no date on when the units will be installed. So how much does the system cost? TSA says it's still too early to tell. It's still in the testing phases. Eric Rosales, CBN News. Looks like promising technology. Thanks, Eric. Well, in health news, great news for the more than half a million Americans with multiple sclerosis. Lori Johnson tells us about a new drug that's so much better than the others. One doctor describes it as the difference between a cell phone and a landline. MS is a terrible disease where the body's own immune system actually attacks healthy tissue. 
Rebecca Cherubini has been struggling with multiple sclerosis for 15 years. I surrendered it to God. I'm like, if this is your will, I would love for you to change it. But if not, okay, then you need to give me the grace to deal. Like most, her MS came out of the blue when she was young. Blurred vision to the point where I started to become nervous about driving. And then um, one day I was actually going to work and I pulled off. Other symptoms include fatigue, falling, and difficulty thinking. In the case of MS, the immune system attacks nerves in the brain and spinal cord. It gets worse over time and there's no cure. I want to be able to drive my kids to soccer. I don't want to be debilitated. I don't want to be in a wheelchair. Now Rebecca may get her wish. She's one of dozens of <laughs> MS patients to test a new drug called ocrelizumab. It works to stop the cells in the immune system from attacking the central nervous system. And it's clearly effective. It's been shown to stop the disease in its tracks. Not just the more common relapsing form of MS, but also the most aggressive type which is called primary progressive. Ocrelizumab was the first uh, medication tried in primary progressive MS that actually worked. Dr. Michael Reiki oversaw the ocrelizumab trial at the Ohio State Medical Center and says patients call it a game changer. They say, you know, I really haven't had any kinds of effects from my MS. Uh, and that's really obviously quite satisfying as an MS physician who, you know, can remember the days when we really didn't have anything to treat patients. I feel normal again. I was telling them I don't, I just feel normal. Ocrelizumab is just one four-hour infusion every six months. This medicine, I don't have to worry about it. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to take it every day. I don't have to worry about ordering it. I don't have to worry about any reactions to it. It costs $65,000 a year, which, believe it or not, is less than most MS drugs. And while this breakthrough can stop the progression of MS, doctors still don't know what causes the disease, so prevention remains a mystery. If you look at identical twins, when one twin gets MS, 70% of the time, the other identical twin, who clearly has the same genetics as their uh, brother or sister, doesn't get MS. Since MS is an inflammatory disease, things that cause inflammation like obesity, stress, and smoking could factor in. On the flip side, new studies show taking vitamin D might help prevent it. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Thanks, Lori. Well, America's kids are getting even more overweight and obese. In fact, the problem is getting worse among our youngest children from the ages of two to five. That's a finding from a report in the journal Pediatrics, and it dashes hopes that the obesity problem was getting better among kids in the United States. Experts say the main reasons a growing number of kids are obese is a lack of exercise and junk food. And Pat, we all know junk food isn't good for you, but it's awfully addictive. Well, I have before me an array of normal breakfast food. Let's run a camera down there, Mr. Director, please. You see these things? These are what you give your kids for breakfast in the morning, and you think you're wonderful parents because you give it to them. Let's just take one of these boxes and see what's in it. This is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mmm. Mm, sounds real good. <laughs> singer. All right. Now, this has, if you read the label on the back, it has uh, whole grain wheat, sugar, rice flour, canola oil, fructose, malted dextrin, dextrose, uh, and then you've got some other stuff. All right, uh, according to this level, if you, if you eat three quarters of a cup, which isn't a whole lot, you get nine grams of sugar. Oh, that's a lot of sugar. But you see what it's got in it? Sugar fructose, mm. maltodextrin, dextrose, they're all sugars. Yeah. Now, little kids, that, that's the stuff, and you think you're a good parent, you can feed them this garbage. This is this, here's one. We used to eat this a lot when I was a kid. Fruit, well, but you're healthy, <laughs> how come? All right, now this one starts <laughs> off, the first thing says sugar, then it says uh, uh, wheat flour, whole grain uh, oat flour, and then it says corn syrup, Mm. Corn starch, dextrose, hydrogenated vegetable. That, that's the, the that's the trans fat stuff. Hydrogenated vegetable oil, and uh, it's got uh, natural and artificial flavors. 
and uh, it's got red 40 and, and yellow 5, oh, yeah. and you've got... It's like poison, uh, just like putting poison in your it body. It really is. <laughs> and, and this stuff has got 14 grams of sugars mm -hmm. in Fruit Loops. Now, how many parents feed this garbage to your children? You wonder why they're fat. Now, listen, little children, and believe me, do not have a, an ingrown desire for sugar and salt. If you do not put that stuff to them, they will not get a taste for it. You don't have to feed them sugar. Now, you want a good cereal, plain old ordinary oatmeal, and you can get the kind of oatmeal that is the old-fashioned that you have to cook for four or five minutes, mm -hmm. and it's really good for you. If you want to sweeten it, you can chop up a few dates, put the dates in there. That's good. But the little children don't need sweets. Their tongues and their mouth do not need sweets. So if you give them vegetables, you can give them carrots, you can give them celery, you can give them all these things, and they'll love it. You can give them fruit, and they'll eat it, you know, fresh fruit, they'll love it. But don't feed them this garbage. And, well, and you're not going to get satisfied. You're going to be hungry again in five minutes, and you're going to crave more sugar, and it's a vicious cycle. Of course, and you wonder why they're hungry. Of course they're hungry, because this stuff will set up, and if you feed them white bread instead of Whole grain bread, that's for another thing. The white bread will go immediately into sugar. Right. And, you know, you say, well, how come my kid's getting fat? Look at this garbage. <laughs> it's horrible. Shame. <laughs> they, they ought to arrest these people. You, the, the, these are the big companies, Kellogg's and General Mills and these other companies that make this stuff. Who well, it's them? scary when you can't even find one ingredient that could be considered real food when yeah. you're looking down these uh, well, lists of Well, and you go down and the little kid says, I want that, Mommy. No, you can eat oatmeal. Oatmeal's good. I eat oatmeal. Oatmeal with bear, fresh berries. Well, delicious. It's delicious, But yeah. you don't have to. You can put stevia in it or some chopped up dates. Delicious. I love dates. Yeah. Well, dates that, make dates. everything better. Okay. Yeah. Well, folks, that's our health tip for the day. But please don't mess up your children. And they're getting fat. According to the statistics, yeah. two to five-year-old children, obese. That brings about diabetes. It brings about heart conditions. It'll, and they'll get fat. And they'll get sick. And they'll be running up the medical bills. And we wonder how come we've got such expensive medicine. Mm -hmm. Almost, what is it, 18% or so of the GDP, I think, is in health care. It's, it's yeah. horrible. Well, that's why you're looking at it right here on this table. Change their breakfast, change their life. Oatmeal. Amen. Oat bran. What else? And that's berries. Berries. Dates. Berries, <laughs> dates. Uh, All right. And nuts. Lots of nuts. Mm -hmm. Nuts are good. Berries are good. Phytochemicals. We'll, 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 if you listen to us, you'll get healthy. I promise. All right. Amen. All right. Well, up next, inside the controversial testing by researchers at the VA, is it actually saving lives or just torturing animals? We're talking about tests like taking six-month-old puppies, putting them on treadmills, forcing them to run, drilling holes in their skulls, destroying their brains, and charging taxpayers for it. CBN News weighs in on both sides of the debate after this. Well, Americans have a mixed opinion about uh, medical research on animals. Regardless of how you feel about it, you may be surprised to learn you're paying for it with your tax dollars, including what may be painful testing on man's best friend. Jennifer Wishon investigates a practice that's caught the attention of veterans, taxpayers, and members of Congress. Hospital in Richmond, Virginia. On a service call to the third floor one day, he was shocked by what he saw. We saw a bowl sitting on a counter with a bread-like substance in it. We walked over and looked at it, and there was a handwritten note beside it. And he, we looked at it and spoke about uh, where it came from, but it was, a, it was a dog's heart. Harvesting the hearts of dogs euthanized after medical testing is just one of the shocking practices going on at Veterans Affairs that's causing a national stir. We're talking about tests like taking six-month-old puppies, putting them on treadmills, forcing them to run exhausted dogs, 
inducing heart attacks, sloppy and botched surgeries, restraint devices, drilling holes in their skulls, destroying their brains and charging taxpayers for it. Bilotti founded White Coat Waste Project, a watchdog group that targets taxpayer-funded experiments on animals. Last year, he started following the money at the VA and discovered on paper what Wiesner was witnessing and documenting in person. They look you in the eye and they're, you can tell they're fearful. It's almost like they're looking at you like, you know, wondering, are you here to help or hurt? This type of medical testing on dogs, the kind that causes pain, is conducted at VA hospitals in Milwaukee, Cleveland, and here in Richmond, Virginia. The question, is experimenting on man's best friend actually improving the lives of veterans, or is research on dogs antiquated and just plain cruel? I was very much taken back. Florida Congressman Brian Mast served as a bomb disposal expert in the U.S. Army. He lost both legs in service to his country and is a patient at the VA. You know, I've worked with dogs on the battlefield. Uh, you know, my family's always had dogs. You know, my kids have a dog. It's un-American to, to not love dogs, number one. It'd be like not liking chicken or, or, or french fries or something like that. Mast joined other members of the House to temporarily cut off funding for the research that causes dogs pain. It's overwhelmingly popular with everybody. Right? Virginia Congressman Dave Bratt introduced legislation to permanently end taxpayer funding for the research, which has bipartisan support. If you can find a less invasive way of for getting the same research results without uh, torture and extreme pain to our animal friends, we want to go that route. VA Secretary David Shulkin urges lawmakers to keep the funding. He says it may lead to advancements that offer seriously disabled veterans the hope of a better future, he writes in an op-ed, adding canine research works because of the distinct physical and biological characteristics humans and dogs share that other species do not. Most of the advances the VA reports gaining from dog research came in the 1950s and 60s. But the department credits recent FDA approval of the first implantable artificial pancreas for diabetic patients to research on dogs. And the department warns stopping current canine research would stop the progress that VA is making to find better ways to care for our veterans with spinal cord injuries, cardiac arrhythmias, diabetes, risk of strokes, and need for organ transplants. Wiesner says he's disturbed valuable space and resources are being used to conduct painful tests on dogs while veterans struggle to get the care they need in a timely manner. A VA patient himself Wiesner waited nine months for a routine appointment. What do they pay for a research dog compared to how many, you know, therapy dogs could you buy for veterans that are in danger of hurting themselves uh, or need a therapy dog? For Congressman Mast, advocating for veterans is his most important job. I take it seriously anytime there is just even the slightest failure for one of those people that were willing to give the, the last beat of their heart in service to this country. He's also uncomfortable with hard-earned tax dollars being spent on procedures that make many Americans cringe. Surprisingly, Bilotti says taxpayers are funding more animal research than private industry. We know it's at least, at least... 15 billion a year in taxpayer funding. So we're not talking about pharmaceutical companies here. We're not talking about cosmetics testing here. We're not talking about private industry here. We're talking about government spending here. They spend far more, the USDA, EPA, NIH, DOD, and Department of Veterans Affairs than the entire private sector does combined. I was very proud to be a soldier and the, the nature of my work serving in, in special operations and, and being a bomb technician, uh, I've had the opportunity to, to save life and I've had the opportunity to take life. And uh, I, I know the difference between innocent and evil. And I don't think anybody should be bashful about pointing out what is innocent and saying that that's where uh, our time is, is well spent to advocate on behalf of the innocent, regardless of whether they're, you know, dogs or, or other animals or whether they're uh, people. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Interesting, ladies and gentlemen. You, I'm sure there are differing views about what we have. And, you know, animal testing uh, that's painless is not a bad thing. I mean, we do gain a lot of insight because of what we do. I mean, we use organs from pigs, for example, for various types of transplants. So. It isn't all bad, but uh, some of this looks like it's horrible. If it causes torture to dogs, 
that's not a good thing to use our taxpayer money for. Well, in an interview, since uh, Secretary Shulkin uh, wrote uh, the column that Jennifer mentioned, he says, quote, he's not a strong believer in the need for canine research and that there won't be any new medical testing on canines at the VA without his personal approval. Nevertheless, the source tells CBN News that the testing, despite what the secretary says, is still going on. Mm, I like what that yeah. soldier said. He, there's a difference between Lethal. good and evil, and it's not too hard to figure out. That's and right. I think we all know the difference okay. there. Well, coming up, a wife walks in on her cheating husband when she's seven months pregnant. I just remember praying, asking God that I would die on the table when they did the C-section for the pregnancy. I just didn't know how to make the pain I was feeling inside stop. Watch how this woman finds the strength to fight for her family after this. Well, we're glad to have you with us today on this midday of the week. Jelana Walsh had been married for 12 years, and Jelana was seven months pregnant when she had the shock of her life. She walked in on her husband cheating on her right in her own home. For Jelana, the discovery was so painful, she actually wanted to die. How could the man who once loved her, adored her, so brutally betray their life together? Take a look. I thought she was gorgeous, and we just connected. Our birthdays were on the same day. A lot of things just kind of, wow, this only makes sense. When Chadwick and Jelana Walsh met in 1991 on the campus of Oral Roberts University, their chemistry was undeniable. I was drawn to him because of his passion for the Lord. Instantaneously, we became best friends. We started ministering on the street and we go door to door witnessing. Their next step was marriage in 1994. The first seven years were wedded bliss. They were serving together in ministry, now as associate pastors at their church, while Chad worked another full-time job. Together, raising their two children, the Walsh's romance was flourishing. I have pictures all over my desk and I said, ooh, that's your wife? Yeah, that's my baby right there. Proud and loving. But by their 12th year of marriage, the pressures of life seemed to mount all at once. They lost their first home when Chadwick was laid off. Jelana lost her father to cancer and she was having complications with her third pregnancy. The romance kind of died down in her marriage because here I am pregnant and you know, don't touch me. I just kind of wanted a friend at that point. I was dealing with loneliness and hurt from having both of my parents gone, and he was working a lot trying to pay bills. I began to be distracted by the cares of this life, and it really began to just deteriorate my devotion to the Lord. Chad's quality time with God and his family were replaced by a growing addiction to pornography. So I clicked out of curiosity, and it opened up to a whole new world. A disgusting world, but at the time was appealing to me. To hide that from my wife, I was definitely feeling as if there was a part of me dying. Continuing to serve as ministers, the couple agreed to share their home with three friends in need of temporary housing. Chad and one of the women began an affair. On the day the friends were set to move out, Jelana caught Chad and the woman together. I was seven months pregnant when I found out, and I just remember praying, asking God that I would die on the table when they did the C-section for the pregnancy. I just didn't know how to make the pain I was feeling inside stop. It was so painful to feel betrayed like that and to feel like I was no longer loved. I did love her, but I knew without a shadow of a doubt, one, God was very disappointed with me. I believed he's gonna have a problem forgiving me. Also, I didn't believe my wife would, could ever forgive me for that. I was so deep and so dark and so disconnected. I was like, you know what? We can end this. I want a divorce. But Jelana decided to fight for their marriage. I came to quickly realize that I had to love me. I had to find my identity outside of my mom, my dad, my husband. I had to find out who I was in God. 
God was speaking to me to rise up to be a warrior. You're a woman of God. So I began to say, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. I just began quoting scriptures over and over. Eventually, the Word of God was getting inside of me and it was building me up and making me stronger. And the Lord started speaking to me and He said, I want you to start showing your husband love. Stop bringing up the situation with the affair. I remember saying, God, how could I forgive him? And God said, as many times as you have been unfaithful to me, and I've taken you back, what pride you're walking in not to extend that same love and forgiveness to him. I started praying for everything around him that he would be the man of God that God called him to be. She says, I, I pray that God would have mercy on you for hurting his daughter. It felt as if I was ha occurring, having a heart attack right then. It felt as if God took my heart and just cleansed it. It was that moment right there that woke me up to know this woman truly loves me. And there may be a chance that God also loves me too. While we were yet in our sin, as I was, the Word of God says He forgave us. I will say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I I'm so sorry for hurting my family. I'm going to turn my plate over. I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to seek God. As Chad fasted and prayed, he also joined a Christian men's group and overcame his addiction to pornography. The couple started praying together and communicating more. The key to our marriage being restored is, first of all, God. The Lord stepped in and just brought healing and work. We had to put the work in. We renewed our vows. At that wedding, we actually exposed what happened. and. Jaws were dropping like, what? I had no clue. And then after that, the response was, hey, I'm doing this. I did that too. Can you help me? Now that God has restored their union, they counsel couples through their ministry forward marriage. The Walshes share their testimony in their book called Infidelity. We're not the couple who had a messed up marriage. We were a couple who went through a storm, made it through. There is absolutely hope for any marriage that's going through problems, betrayal, infidelity, I know firsthand that God can heal any marriage. I know it. You know, the Bible says, I hate divorce, or God hates divorce. I hate putting away. God intends two people to become one flesh. They're not any longer two, but they are one. And for this cause shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and the twain shall be one flesh. And Jesus said, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. God, his heart grieves when marriage is destroyed. And yet, at the same time, we have to recognize that we deal with fallible human beings that we have appetites. Every man, every woman has various types of needs. If a woman is lonely and doesn't feel loved, then she might reach out to somebody who will show her affection. If a man has certain physical needs and uh, his wife is not able to give him what he needs, he might reach out to somebody else. Does that mean it's uh, right? No, it's not. But at the same time, we're, we're creatures, we're animals, as well as being human beings. And God will forgive, and we have to forgive each other what we do. It's just the way God wants this world to be, is that He wants us to forgive. And so if you've got a problem like this, and you may well don't say, well, look what He did to me. Well, what did you do to God? How many times have you been unfaithful to God? Uh, how many times have you failed to love God as you should with all your mind and your heart and your strength? How many times? Okay. If God can forgive you, then you can forgive your spouse. And that's what He wants us to do, is to live in love and to live in harmony. Now, we've got a little book called Love and Marriage that we'll be glad to send you. It may help you in some of these things. We'll give it to you free if you just call in and say, I want that book that Pat's talking about. You can get it for free. Our telephone number is 1-800. That's a long distance call. 700-7000. And we're here because we love you and care about you. 
and we want you to love each other. And God wants families, husbands to love their wives, wives to love and respect their husbands, and together to live as one in Christ. Wendy? Thanks, Pat. Well, still ahead, we've got your email questions. Mary Ann says, my husband insists that since Jesus is God and all religions seek God, then the God they worship is actually Jesus Christ, and therefore all religions will be saved. How can I explain that his conclusion is incorrect? Your questions, honest answers, coming up later. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Billy Graham's body lies in honor here in Washington at the U.S. Capitol today. It's one of the highest, one of the nation's highest distinctions. He's only the fourth civilian ever to lie in honor in the Capitol Rotunda and the first private citizen to receive the honor since civil rights hero Rosa Parks in 2005. Well, today on Faith Nation, CBN News will bring you special coverage as Washington pauses to remember the Reverend Graham's life. Beginning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we'll be live on the CBN News Facebook page with the latest from Capitol Hill and we'll take you inside as lawmakers reflect on the life and legacy of one of the greatest evangelists who ever lived. You can find our special Faith Nation coverage at facebook.com slash CBN News and you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. We'll be back with more of today's 700 Club right after this. Basava is a happy, energetic boy. He likes going to school and playing with friends. But not long ago, cataracts made it almost impossible for him to see. A simple surgery was all he needed, but his parents had no money to pay for it. Basava's parents didn't notice anything different about their younger son until he went to school. Whenever he read or wrote anything, his face was right next to the book. When I asked him about it, he told me he cannot see. In the school, I could not see letters in the book or on the blackboard. When his parents took him for an eye checkup, he was diagnosed with cataracts in both eyes. We work in the fields and are trying to save some money for surgery. It will take years, but he needs surgery now. CBN found out about Basava through a partner hospital, and we quickly came forward to pay for his surgery. We are very happy someone like you helped us. We were hopeless until you came. After the surgery, Basava recovered very well and started excelling in school. We are very grateful to CBN. You supported us with the help we needed and restored our son's eyesight. Now that I can see, I'm very happy. I can see my friends and play with them. Thank you, CBN. Wow, can you imagine being that young and not being able to see, not being able to play with your friends or go to school? Well, Pat and I were just talking, it was only $90 to fix his eyes and change his life forever. If you are a CBN partner, you helped make that happen. If you would like to help people all over the world like that little boy and also spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is a great time, a great day to go to your phones and say yes and make that difference. The number is toll free on your screen, 1-800-700-7000, or you can log on to CBN.com. It's just 65 cents a day, $20 a month is all it takes to become a CBN partner. When you do, we have a very special gift for you right now. It's Pat's latest teaching called Answered Prayer. These are incredible teachings by Pat, a lifetime of uh, just just really sitting down, it's like sitting down with Pat and hearing mm -hmm. a lifetime of answered prayers and miracles that will so encourage your faith and some great stories as well. We want you to have it. It's our gift when you give us a call right now. And some people have been watching it and yeah, loving well, it, Pat. Hope Here's they have. Dave from Girton, North Carolina. Dave says, answered prayer was very helpful. I discovered I have been cursing myself for years by talking about my weak heart. Pat taught me to simply believe God for healing and wholeness because the power of life and death is in the tongue and you will have the fruit of your lips. Yeah, there's so much great wisdom and teaching on well, this. We had a lot of fun together. Scott and I yeah. kind of hit it off together and 
it, it was a very exciting moment to, to relive some of the wonderful things God has done. It's really You've true. You've seen a lot of answered prayers oh, in, in your ministry and life. Years, I, you cannot <laughs> believe how many miracles. Well, we want you to have it. Give us a call right now. Well, up next, during their nearly 100-year history, the Fairfield Four have won numerous awards and countless hearts along the way. I saw one fella with his head on Barry's shoulder crying like a baby. So I know God has got his hands on what we do. What a voice. This Grammy-winning gospel group talks about the true inspiration behind their music after this. Well, the Fairfield Four are living legends. They've been inducted into the Gospel Hall of Fame, been honored by the National Endowment of the Arts, and they've shared the stage with practically every big name in music over the last century. And while their faces have changed over the years, the heart of their music has never wavered. Take a look. Don't you let no the Fairfield Four traces its roots back to 1921, when the group was founded in the basement of Nashville's Fairfield Baptist Church. The original members have all passed away, but their legacy continues. We caught up with the newest incarnation of the group in Nashville to talk about their near 100-year history. I grew up watching the Fairfield Four at the Ryman Auditorium. Never had the idea that one day I'd be a member. Why don't you swear? Bass singer Joe Thompson, a cousin of original members Harold and Rufus Carruthers, recalls seeing the group as a boy. We stand on the corner and imitate the Fairfield Four. I didn't know they was related to me at first until my mom told me, but uh, we used to listen to them. That's all we had to listen to when I was coming up. The original Fairfield Four made their first recording in 1941 and performed for over 40 years together, including a 10-year stint on Nashville's WLAC radio. They disbanded in 1962, but a reunion concert in 1980 introduced them to a whole new audience and breathed new life into the group. When someone got sick or when someone passed away, it was always somebody that the Lord put in place to step right in, and I think it's a spirit-filled group. Uh, supplied by the Spirit of the Lord. The rebirth of the group made them so popular that they were signed to Warner Brothers and won their first Grammy in 1992. Since then, they've also recorded with artists like Elvis Costello, John Fogarty, and country singer Leanne Womack. Born by the Virgin Mary, born, born, born in a Bethlehem. I think the reason so many artists and people reach out to us to be a part of their recording is because um, first they like the sound that we producing, but secondly and most important, I think it's the anointing that's in our singing. If you listen to all of our songs, they all came out of the Bible. And I know it touches some people because I saw one fella with his head on Barry's shoulder crying like a baby. So I know God has got his hands on what we do. In 2000, the Fairfield Four also performed on the soundtrack for the Coen Brothers film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The eclectic collection of folk, old-time country, and gospel songs sold 10 million copies, stunning many in the music industry, but not Laris Bird. I'm not surprised at all. I think the world still wants so much more of that. It's so original. The Fairfield Four's repertoire is a mixture of spirituals, hymns, and an occasional contemporary song, but always with the unmistakable arrangement that is unique to this a cappella group. Swing low, sweet cherry. Singing a cappella, we so self-contained. We can we can do a show anywhere. We go to the to the grocery store. We go to the shopping mall, restaurant, and serenade people, and it works out just great. In 2016, the Fairfield Four won a Grammy for Best Roots Gospel Album, 
It was not just an emotional high point, but also a validation for this newest version of the group. I used to look at people getting them and I said, why are they crying? Why are they doing it? But now I understand that it just, it's really unexplainable how you really feel getting a Grammy. Up until that point, we did feel like uh, we were like in the shadows of the, our predecessors. The Grammy that we received sort of solidified our place and although they are grateful for the acclaim and awards, the members say they have a higher purpose and a higher calling. We believe that this group was ordained by God and it's been led by God the, all the way. Wherever we sing, the message is the same. We spreading the good news of Jesus Christ through, our, through the words of our song and uh, hoping that we can introduce our Lord and Savior to the ones who haven't accepted Him in their lives. Coming for to carry me home. Wow, what a voice. The Fairfield Four's latest album is the one that won them the Grammy. It's called Still Rockin' My Soul, and you can get that wherever music is sold. Well, it is time now for your questions and some honest answers. We're going to start with Mary Ann's question. She says, Pat, my husband is a new Christian. He insists that since Jesus is God and all religions seek God, then the God they worship is Jesus, and therefore all religions will be saved. Please address this. I can understand how he's gotten the wrong answer in this theory, but how can I explain that his conclusion is incorrect? Well, you can read what Jesus himself had to say, you know, uh, that uh, uh, he said, you, you know, you, you Samaritans think that you're serving somebody, but salvation is of the Jews. Uh, he said that himself. Uh, there's really only one way. There's not a hundred ways to God. Uh, and, you know, the service of false gods and false religions has been something that's been condemned by the Bible over and over and over again. I was reading today about... Uh, in the book of Acts, where they were talking about how the people began to serve the, uh, uh, well, the, the heavenly hosts. They were worshiping the gods of the stars. Uh, I mean, how many gods did they have in Egypt? How many gods? Did they, I mean, they're, what is it in the Hindu, uh, 300 million oh, gods? I think it's 3 million or it's, three million. it's something three, crazy three, like three, that. Yeah, all right. Well, what are we, uh, 300, whatever. Yeah, I mean, how many gods are there? Don't be ridiculous. There are demons all over the world. You don't worship them. There's one, one way. The Bible makes it very clear. There's one man between God and man. That's the man, Jesus. Mm -hmm. One intercessor, one, only one. Okay. Amen. Tanya writes in, I don't think anyone over 50 remembers any school shootings growing up as kids. What they do remember is a school system which started at every day with Bible reading, prayer, pledging allegiance to the flag, and a respect for authority. Isn't Jesus the same yesterday, <laughs> today, and forever? How can we fight to put those values back in the public schools? And she's right. I don't remember any school well, shootings back didn't then. have it in those days, but maybe we ought to do away with the ACLU mm -hmm. and the ones that have done everything they can to take religion out of the schools. There has been an onslaught against religious values in the schools that's going on for years. And the fountainhead was what was called Teachers College at Columbia University. And uh, out of that have been thousands and thousands of teachers. And, but the Supreme Court ruled that you couldn't have prayer in the school. The Supreme Court has done more to destroy the moral fabric of our nation. I know it. You want to honor the court and all that stuff. That's great. But they have done terrible things to the moral fabric of this nation. And you were right when you pointed out. Okay. All right. Vicki says, lately I've been disturbed by some errors that have come from the pulpit of my church. One pastor says when Jesus was on earth, he was not God, but showed us what it looks like for a man to be in right relationship with God. So we could learn how to do miracles like he did. Another pastor says he rarely sins and can go a week without sinning. A visiting evangelist told us Jesus is still a 5'8 Jewish man living in heaven. Our pastors are not accessible for questions. By continuing in this church, am I in agreement with what they teach? I think you ought to find, there are many churches, you ought to find another one. I mean, that thing is just full of, they're shot through with error. <laughs> one after the other, they're er erroneous. 
and you don't want to be subjecting yourself and your children to erroneous teachings. So I, you asked me what to do, I'd look someplace else, because there are plenty of opportunities for you to find some, an alternate, and you don't have to sit under false teaching. Amen. We leave you with today's Power Minute from Nehemiah. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm. Tomorrow, singer David uh, Dunn shares his heartfelt story behind his song, Yellow Balloon. Yellow Balloons. I'm not I, I, with I, yellow have, I can't wait to hear that. You know this? <laughs> tomorrow, they'll be doing it, and I will not be here tomorrow, but Gordon, I think Gordon will be back from his journeys. Yes. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>